Hi everyone, in this video I'll show you how to use a message broker RabbitMQ with an ASP.NET Core Web API application. Message brokers allow other applications to send and receive messages asynchronously. As a result of this, we can build highly scalable, decoupled applications that don't rely on synchronous actions. Having a message broker like RabbitMQ to manage our inter-application communication allows our system as a whole to scale much easier. It is one of many message brokers that handles accepting, storing and sending messages. But before we look at the code, there are a couple of concepts we must cover first. So let's look at this image. Here you can see producers or publishers and those are applications that send data to RabbitMQ. Then we have a queue and this is a place where we send messages in RabbitMQ. Think of it as a large message buffer. Message queues allow us to build decoupled applications while improving performance and scalability. Finally, we see consumers or subscribers and these are applications that receive messages stored in queues. So, with some of the basic concepts of RabbitMQ covered, let's see how we can use it in the .NET Core Web API. As you can see, I use two applications, a producer application, which is a web API project, and a subscriber application, which is a console application. First, I need to ensure that RabbitMQ package is added to our applications. And as you can see, I have it installed in producer and in subscriber. With this package added, we are ready to send and receive messages. So let's start with the connection. Inside the RabbitMQ folder and also inside the connection folder, I will create a new interface and name it iRabbitMQ connection. Here I will add a single property member with the iConnection type, which comes from the RabbitMQ client namespace and name it connection. I will make it only getter. Now I need a class in the same folder and I name it RabbitMQ connection. This class will implement the iRabbitMQ connection interface and also implement the iDisposable interface, which means it will have a method to clean up resources when it's no longer needed. Next, I have a private field of the iConnection type to store the connection object. And also, I will create a new iConnection property named connection to expose the private connection field. Now let's create a constructor for our class and inside the constructor I'll call a method to initialize the connection. Of course I don't have it yet so let's create it. It will be a private void method with the same name I used in the constructor. So first I will create an instance of connection factory and set the host name property to localhost. This tells our application to connect to a RabbitMQ server running on the local machine. If you want, we can add the username and password here as well, but for this video I will use the default values. Then to create a new connection, I will use the factory and the create connection method. And that's it regarding this method. Since this class implements iDisposable, it needs to have a dispose method. Inside, I will simply dispose of the connection. And of course, I'll do that only if the connection is not null. Great. With this in place, I can navigate to the program class and register my connection as a singleton service. And let's use the interface first and then create a new instance here of the RabbitMQ connection class. I am doing it this way and not the regular way without instantiating the implementation class because I want the connection to be established as soon as possible. We don't want to create connection each time we send a request as this is an expensive process. Now. 
let's move to create a producer. I need a new interface inside the RabbitMQ folder and let's name it iMessageProducer. I will add here a single void member named sendMessage of type T and provide a single T message parameter. Now I'm going to implement this interface in a new class named RabbitMQ Producer. So let's inherit from the iMessage Producer interface and let's implement our member. Then I need a connection service here and for that I will create a new private read-only field of the iRabbitMQ connection type and name it connection. I will also use a constructor to initialize this field through dependency injection. Now let's implement the method. Inside it I use the using statement to declare a channel. I will create it using the connection property and the create model method that creates a new channel. Now I will declare a queue using the queue declare method named orders on the channel. Also I will set the exclusive parameter to false, meaning other connections can also access the queue. Next I want to serialize the message object to JSON format using the JSON serializer class with the serialize method. Also, I need the message body that will be sent over the channel. And for that, I use encoding utf8.getBytes method and provide the JSON variable as an argument. Finally, let's call the basic publish method to publish the message. The exchange parameter is empty, meaning we're using the default exchange. Routing key is set to orders, which specifies the destination queue. And the body parameter contains the message content in the byte array format. Great, that's all it takes here. And I only have to navigate back to the program class. And here, register the service as a scoped service by providing the interface and the implementation class. Once I have fully implemented the send message method and registered the service, I can use the service inside the order service class. I already have some business logic implementation here for saving the order to the database, but that's not important for sending the message. Well, to send the message, I need to inject my message producer service first. So let's create a new private read only field. The type is iMessageProducer and let's name it MessageProducer. I also need another parameter for the constructor and I have to initialize the field. Now I can create an async task method named SaveOrder that will accept a single order DTO parameter. This parameter will be provided by the controller class that uses this service. As you can see, the private save method returns the order. So let's store it inside the order variable and await the call to this save method. Finally, I will check if the order is populated and if it is, I will use the producer service and call the send message method to send the order to the consumer. And that's all it takes. The controller logic is also not important for this flow. Next, let's take a look at subscribing to a queue to receive messages by using the subscriber application. The implementation for receiving messages is slightly more complex as we need to constantly listen for messages that enter the queue. This time, to keep the solution as simple as possible, I will do everything inside the program class. So first, as we saw in the producer application, I need the factory to create a connection and of course, created connection. Also, I need a new channel and declared queue, the same one I declared in the producer application. As I said, we already saw this implementation in our previous app. 
Now I can implement the logic required to receive messages from the queue. First, I create a consumer by instantiating a new eventing basic consumer class and providing a channel as an argument. Messages will be pushed to us asynchronously. Therefore, I define a callback method for the received event with two parameters, sender and args. This event will give us access to the message body through the args parameter. So let's get it. Let's create a body variable and use the args.body property and convert it to the array. Also, to get the message from the body, I will use encoding UTF-8 get string method with the body argument. Lastly, I simply want to print the message to the console window to verify that I received the message from the producer app. The final thing we must do is to start the consumer. To do that, I use the basic consume method and specify the queue I want to start consuming messages from. Next, I set auto act to true, which will automatically handle acknowledgement of messages. Finally, I pass in our consumer object, which has our custom received event handler logic to be executed when we receive a message. Excellent. With our producer and subscriber code now in place, let's take a look at how we run the application. First and foremost, we need to spin up a RabbitMQ server, which we can do simply using Docker. Now, for this video, I will use the Docker desktop app, which is quite easy to install and set. And I will open the PowerShell terminal as administrator and use the docker run command to spin up our server. I am using the RabbitMQ3 management image from Docker Hub, which will provide us with the UI available on port 1567.2 to inspect our queues or messages, for instance. We must also add a port mapping for 5672, which is the default port RabbitMQ uses for communication. Now, let's run the command. And after a few seconds, the image is ready. In order to access the management UI, I can open the browser window and navigate to localhost 15.67.2 and use the default login of guest and password guest. You can see the UI is up and running. Now, I set both applications to run a startup and I can simply run both, which as a result will open a console window for subscriber and a browser window with Swagger for producer. Now let's test this. Let's add the product name, the price and the quantity and send the request. As you can see, we get a 201 response code, which means that a new order was created. Now, when we look at our console window, a message is present to show our producer application has sent a message to RabbitMQ, which again shows our subscriber has successfully received it. Great job! We have properly set up our simple RabbitMQ application. Of course, here I used only RabbitMQ, and in the next video, you will see how to combine this knowledge with mass transit to create distributed applications even more easily. That said, I can finish the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.